Yeah, son shit, y'all ready? I hope y'all are. This episode, this episode right here, to be honest, came by accident. It, my whole thing was to do a joint on uh, Joe Lewis, the champion. And more so like the aftermath, after, you know what I'm saying, when he came, when he did what he did for the World War II joint. And how, like, America used him. And, you know, to help boast up the, the, the Americanism and all that. And then, you know, for everybody who knows, he had financial problems. And the government wasn't there, like, to help out. That was the whole point, to get deeper into that story. But on the show, I was doing a rant about the Sesame Place thing, which then had me go, yo, and we're going to scrap that, and we're going to talk about Sesame Street. This is that episode. And I was like, yo, get into it, because a lot of people don't know Sesame Street was really put together for the kids of Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Black kids were in mind. You know what I'm saying? A psychiatrist by the name of, um, oh my God, Chester Pierce was brought in. And the hidden agenda was to build young black children's self-esteem. Use harmonious, humorous, very, you know what I'm saying? Just, just melodic ways to present that. You know what I mean? Like, because that's all we knew. We, we, you know, music is, I don't, I, and I can't speak for other, other households, but in a black household, in brown households, music is that thing. You wake up, you clean up, and there's music playing. Music is always around. You know what I mean? So it was like, yo, what better way to get them to vibe with this to bring the music? You know what I'm saying? We're not going to bore them down with all that other stuff. We're going to bring music to the, to the table and get them into it. It wasn't cartoons. It was the music of it. You know what I'm saying? We always joke about, about the count with this joint. It was the music. You know what I'm saying? We remember all of this stuff from the music. And it was like, yo, we got to do this. I had to do it. I did it. And even to this day, I want to say salute to Sesame Street. Salute to PBS in general. Definitely salute to Sesame Street. Sesame Street has and continues to raise generations. And it's weird because Sesame Street's one of them joints you, you don't think anybody's checking for. You know what I'm saying? Kids really geek out when they see Sesame Street characters. Like they still geek out somehow when they see Mickey and Minnie. And you're like, yo, I can't remember the last time I seen a significant, relevant Mickey and Minnie anything. But kids still geek out when they see them. Bugs Bunny, kids still geek out. Like, even when before they dropped the uh, joint with LeBron James, the Space Jams 2, heads already knew who Bugs Bunny was. You knew. Like, there's that's a wild thing. We're talking, and I don't want to get off topic, but I wanted to say, we're talking characters that were made up in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 60s. Sesame Street came out in the 60s. They're still relevant today. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Simpsons are, like, the next next joint. The Flintstones came out in the 60s, still relevant today. The Simpsons are, like, the only group that's, that might still be, that might go into that mix. You know what I'm saying? Like, Spongebob is in there. Some little kids that are like, ah, Spongebob. What's those veggie, the veggie tales? Eh, these new kids, they like, ah, to that. You know what I mean? South Park. Children are like, yo, I think that's that's the stuff my parents listen. My parents watch that joint. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Family Guy. And I'm not saying the childish stuff. I'm just saying, like, as far as cartoon animation goes, as far as stuff that seems to, like, it'll catch up with it. It'll have a kid peep out first. These joints, they're still here. We still know who Mickey is. You know what I'm saying? Iron Man's been around for a long time. Iron Man's been been around since the 60s. And it wasn't until Robert Downey Jr. Jr. played him that he became that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see that gap of just obscurity. Now you're the most relevant thing in the world. Like, there's a difference. Like, Sesame Street's had its ups and downs. Sesame Street's been caught up out there. I think somebody I think somebody bought, bought the rights to Sesame Street, if I'm not mistaken. People, I can honestly say since my adult life, the government has figured out, has been trying to figure out a way to shut 
PBS and NPR now. Forever. It, but like I said, since my, I, I mean, who knows, it's always been, it probably has always been there. It wasn't until I started really getting into politics that it hit me like, yo, they're always talking about, we need to shut these joints down. Like, what's up with that? You know, but salute to Sesame Street. It has raised a lot of children. And when you think about what happened at the Sesame Place and what I guess was a trend, probably still is a trend at Sesame Place. It's a little disturbing, you know what I'm saying? Not so much as a black man, but just as a person who understands that this, the the, why, the, the spread of Sesame Street, the pop cultureness of Sesame Street, and the start from my humble beginnings of, we want kids, black kids in Harlem, to have self-awareness, and self-confidence, and to be taught. And now, it's everywhere. There's this versions of Sesame Street all over the world. I mean, like that's and and it's teaching. They're teaching children all over the world. That's just some remarkable stuff, man. That's dope. And you just want you got to salute, salute to everybody. Just rest in peace to Jim Henson. You know all that. You got It's a it's a beautiful thing. In this episode, I'm just quickly going through. Yo, the humble beginnings. This is a dope episode. Do your research on Sesame Street too. There's always stuff out here about Sesame Street. Like, Sesame Street was wild back in the early, early stages. Woo! They was wild. You know what I'm saying? Please do your research on that stuff. Enjoy this. Thank y'all for listening. Salute to yourselves. This right here is just dope. I wish, I wish I could get away with playing the Sesame Street theme song. You know what I'm saying? You start doing that, everybody starts going, oh my God, the, the, the copyright infringement. If you know the song, hum it to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sunny days, wishing the clouds away. I want to be where the air's free. Can you tell me how to get? There you go. Look at that. I didn't even have to sing it. I said it, so hopefully it doesn't pick up on anything. Enjoy it. Pull that joint up. Rock with it. Do the th- Don't go out here skipping. Especially if you're older and you go out here skipping and you're older, you're going to mess around and break something. Just do a nice little sway. Nice little sway. Play it and see if your kids arrive with Oh, snap, you playing that Sesame Street? Get it going, man. Again, thank y'all for listening. Enjoy. Do your research on Sesame Street. And enjoy. I'll let y'all next time. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Hey. Woo. I remember. Hold on. Let me tell y'all something, man. We need to be back a little bit. I remember the De La Soul ring ring. Like, De La Soul is one of them groups. Grapes, one of the greatest hip hop groups of all time. I don't care. Yo, I don't care what kind of music of hip hop you listen to. You can go hardcore gangster. You can go crazy out there, weirdo stuff. You can go, you know what I'm saying, God Cypher Divine. Whatever you into, East Coast, West Coast, whatever. Tricore Quest, De La Soul, Run DMC, Outkast, NWA. Wu Tang Clan, they're in that talk conversation. UGK in that conversation. Eight Ball MJG in that get conversation. Ghetto Boys in that conversation. Um, yo, no matter who, no matter, no matter what you're into, those are the type of groups that are always that should always be in that conversation. The greatest hip hop groups of all time. De La Soul was just on another level. De La Soul for me was one of them all, one of them groups I had to grow as a person to, to appreciate. Because I hate it. I, to this day, I ain't going to lie. To this day, I still hate me, myself, and I. I get it, but I hate it. You know what I'm saying? And Ring 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 was another one of them joints I didn't understand the concept as I got older. Then when you become an artist and you're trying to get on all the time, and then somebody plays Ring Ring Ring, and you're listening to the words, what? you're like, yo, oh, snap. <laughs> Hey, but anyway, um, just dope though. You know what I'm saying? Like I told y'all, we were gonna come back and do this thing, man. Cause I don't know, yo. It was, it was. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's talk about it. Like, let's get into it like this. Hold on, hold on. Uh-uh. Let's do it like this. Take it from the top. Take it from the top. This moment. 
in black history. So I was talking about the Spanish Muppet and, and their racist ways. And then I was like, yo, hold on, let, let's tell you, let me let me take it to y'all like this. I don't know if y'all understand. Sesame Street is black. Like when I say black, black, like here's the thing. When you think of black cities back in the day, there's only like five or six of them. DC, Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? And there's one that I that I purposely skipped over because that's the mecca of just black cityness. And it's always so sad when you find out how gentrified it is. And that's Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, there was nothing. Ooh, I messed that up. Back in the ha! back in the day, there was nothing blacker than Harlem. And back in those days when everything was really breaking down and and drugs and and decay and all this was really taking place. Basically, Sesame Street was supposed to be targeted for the young inner city youth of Harlem. You know what I'm saying? We're talking like civil rights issues, the decay of schools going down. And it was like, yo, what do these, what would these kids come home to when they come from school? You know what I'm saying? And it was like, yo, let's put this program together. And that's the wildest joint. You know what I'm saying? Like the theme song alone. It's like a nod to a Duke Ellington song. You know what I'm saying? Take the A train. How you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? That's basically supposed to be something that vibes with that great Duke Ellington song. Y'all ain't understanding, man. Like, yo, with the whole agenda to to be out here doing all kind of stuff with the racial injustice in the game, and you had the whole like vibe just really committing things like in the late in the 60s mid to late 60s it was like yo what do you do right now because the civil rights movement is popping you got all this other stuff jumping and the children's television workshop you know what i'm saying which would become sesame street was like yo we could do something let's what y'all want us to do you know what i'm saying in the sub 1970 the ebony profile of sesame street included a photo you know what I'm saying? A team of African American women out here trying to like, yo, what do we need to do doing studies on trying to make sure that we reach the youth? You know what I mean? Like, y'all, yo, yo, please go out here and do y'all joint on this right here. Because this is what I think people, people lose sight on, man. Like, it's wild to think about Sesame Street being a black a product made for black people, a product made for black people with a black professor holding it down. The creator was a chick named Joan Gans Cooney. And again, she was like on the cover of Ebony with some sisters and going, yo, this is what we trying to do. This is how we getting down. And it was like, yo, let's pop off and get it popping. They had professors, they had people trying to integrate what we want to do. And if y'all know anything, like if you look at old old clips, old old clips, it's a lot of it's a lot of R&B artists, jazz artists, black athletes, black actors, intel black intelligent minds that's on there doing the teachings and singing with the kids and all this. Like wow, it's it's the the history behind this joint. Don't believe me. Like I don't know if YouTube got everything, but look that joint up. I don't even know if PBS has even taken the time to go yo let's go all the way back because yo like the early early joints they used to talk about drugs like finding needles and stuff like and it's crazy man it's like yo what to do and not to talk with strangers and don't do this and don't do that and it was it's just one of them things man like yo it's wild that man we got that point where where the the targeted artists i mean the targeted audience has been disrespected like come on what we talking about right here you know what i mean it was like a dope joint man it was it was it was wild to see that like the fact that you had people come together and go we really need to focus on trying to get this community and be up raising and it's what the one one of my favorite joints the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i always get that joint wrong one, two, three, four, five, six, ah, whatever. Y'all know that joint. That's the point of sisters. You know what I'm saying? Like many 
black artists contributed their like voices to the songs. Black artists contributed to the art and the colors and the crayon, I mean, and the drawings to the joint. It was just, yo, it's a real, real joint, man. So when you, I, again, to see that happening and then Sesame Place, be like, ah, let's just dismiss it. Like, forget, um, what's, the, what's the joint sensitivity training and all that. Somebody needs to take the time to sit them down and go, yo, this is where this started. This is this is how this started. This is where this was the target audience. That these young children were the actual target audience back in the day because the theory was with all this stuff going on and the way that the system was so broken that they'd get lost in the shuffle. And it was like, what do we do to make sure that they're not left behind? You know what I mean? Because our country has done that many times, and I don't want to get on no soapbox about that. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? The reconstruction after after the abolishment of, sh- of slavery never came through. You know what I mean? Once Lincoln died, that whole reconstruction joint died with him. Jim Crow law and the anti-trying to fight Jim Crow law, which was very small and minimal. You know what I'm saying? And and the whole point was, here's a generation we need to make sure we uplift and we show that, yo, we got you. And it was a white woman, black brother, and a bunch of other brothers and sisters, white people too, just coming together and going, yeah, we do this. Sesame Street supposedly is somewhere in Harlem. Technically. Technically. You know what I mean? So, yo, that's just wild. That's all I'm saying, man. This was the Black History Moment. Please, if hey, look that joint up. Look it up, man. And, you, and you'll see the top. Yo, that's this, who they was really focusing this on. You know what I'm saying? And of course, with PBS catching on and PBS being what a PBS is, and and Big Bird and then the movies and all this, everything becomes what it becomes and it blossoms. And of course, sometimes you forget, you, you forget where you come. How they say, don't forget where you came from. Sometimes you forget where you come from. You know what I mean? And they forgot where they came from. Um, this is just one of the moments, man. We got almost about 15 minutes. Just a little under 20 minutes. I mean like a minute by under, maybe two minutes. We're going to get into some more music, man. Please look that up. You know what I'm saying? Do 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 the research on it. Do the knowledge on it. It's a wild. It's a, it's, blo- it's mind-blowing, yo. That like, sometimes I'm always like, yo, it was really a different world back then. Like, they was really out here looking. They like, people kind of knew the game was was really rigged and against us. And it was trying a little, you know what I'm saying? It was, and it was sneaky joints. Yeah, y'all ever, I, I don't know if y'all understand that. With my man, um, Kunta Kente, or, 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 I forgot what his name is on Star Trek, but when he did Reading Rainbow, it's the small, it's the small, subtle stuff, man. Bill Cosby going out here, getting professors and, 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 um, psychologists to do his show, to make sure that they're not representing black people in any any negative light or making making the foolery the fact that bill cosby and sydney portier dropped that trilogy to be the anti-black exploitation movies and as time go on by the 80s and 90s they get they get grouped in but they were supposed to be the counterculture to the black exploitation movie the um y'all know the joints i'm talking about the let's do it again and I might be messing Saturday night, the uh, Saturday night joint, and the other one that had our uh, Raj, Raj from um, what's happening on it. That joint, those, those were supposed to be the the the, the counterculture to that. Like brothers was always out here bobbing and weaving. If you listen to Richard Pryor's stand up 100 percent, like one of his albums from the beginning to the end, he bobbing and weaving some joints in there. At the end of the day, with all them jokes. This little subtle choice she was throwing in there, man. But yeah, yo, and the cloud was clapping, and and yeah, all right, y'all act like y'all damn, but y'all ain't damn, y'all ain't damn. You know what I'm saying? Muhammad Ali doing what he was doing. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Joe, I mean not Joe Brown, Jim Brown. You know what I'm saying? Jackie Robinson, who was sketchy with it sometimes, but he was there. You know what I mean? It's just yo, it was a lot of stuff that was going on, man. And it's always dope to know that people had young black minds, bodies, and souls, and futures in mind when they were out here doing their thing, man. I feel good that I was raised up in that kind of stuff right there, you know what I'm saying? Because the stuff now, hey, is yo, my mama would never let me, uh, yo, 
my mama would never let my sister walk out here just twerking and singing some of these songs. Yo, my, my, my mama didn't even want her singing some stuff that wasn't even as remotely close to sexual. Like, it was just like, yo, like, what you, what you, hey, what you singing? And I can't think of the words of the song right now, but it was just something, you know, and it was just like, yeah, it was, I, compared to now, completely G rated. You know what I mean? But back then, it was like, nah, you, you can't be wearing these kind of shorts and you ain't gonna be out here doing them kind of dances. Now we encouraging that. It's, yo, nobody got our kids, like, interest at all. They, they are not looking out for our children. It'll BET, none of these joints. I, I, I stepped on the soapbox. I'm about to step off and get <laughs> I was, yo, hey, let's get back to this music, man. Let's do what we do. Um, let's go, man. Word up. Yeah. About to play this one joint that I love. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to um, Wise Intelligent of Poor Righteous Teachers. Let's go. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, that's my time. Word up. You know how we do, man. You know what we do. This felt dope. Oof. Hey. This is how we get down on Wednesdays anyway. You know what I'm saying? Classic joints. Old classic joints. Black Moon. New edition. Word up. We played some um, UMC too. We played a lot of joints tonight. Word up. Anyway, man. I'm going to holler at y'all Saturday. Unless y'all check out the um, Facebook page joint Friday. But hey, I ain't even hollering at y'all in. Y'all looking at some um, uh, joints. But anyway. I holler at y'all live Saturday. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do what we do, man. Like I told y'all, we're going to have like a bunch of... um. Dope, soulful, banging foreign music. Trust me when I tell y'all that. You know, y'all know how I get down, man. Where we gonna have fun on that? Um, do a lot of joints, man. We gonna get into some bangers. We gonna hit y'all in the head. Word up. So, um, until then, you know what we do, how we do. Salute to everybody who was out there listening. Thank y'all for rocking with me and understanding. I don't even know how I ended up on that Sesame Street joint, but you know what I mean. Sometimes I ain't even got. I, sometimes you gotta like prepare, have stuff unprepared. You gotta ride out. But anyway. Let's get down and do what we do. <clears throat> you know how we do. Mm. Just gotta, you know. <clears throat> they say you only live once. That's a lie. You only die once. So anytime that your God allows you to go out here and continue your journey, show the world the best version of you. Y'all be safe. Peace. This is a Soul of Art presentation.